right. Well, hi, everybody. Hello. I'm Kathy Russ. I'm the director of the Troy Public Library. And it is my very great pleasure to speak with you today about interview skills. Um, this is a subject that is very dear to my heart. And I will tell you why. Um, I have been on both sides of the interview table. I have been interviewed and I have interviewed people. Um, I have been director here for about six and a half years. And prior to that, I was director of a couple other libraries. So for the last, I would say 20 years or so, I've conducted a lot of interviews. And over the course of the last 20 years, I have seen some great interviews and I have seen some really, really horrible interviews. And for better or for worse, for better because it gives me an opportunity to teach this class, but definitely for worse, over the last two years, I have been in more bad interviews than good interviews. And it hurts me. It hurts me deeply because I see people with potential who are just sabotaging themselves. And I decided to do this class because I really want to help people do a better job in their interview. There's some really common mistakes that people make that I think can be fixed with a little bit of practice. And there's ways that you can do better that you might not have thought of that are really, really easy, but maybe you just need somebody to tell you what they are. So that's why I'm doing this class. A Little bit of background on me, as I mentioned. Um, I've been in the library field for about, golly, 23 years now. Um, I have been a library director for about 14 years. Um, I started out at the Troy Public Library in the circulation department. I checked in books and checked out books and took your money for fines and gave you library cards and all that good stuff. And after a couple of years, I decided that um, I wanted to do some more. So I started moving up the management chain and became a supervisor of people. I worked at the Baldwin Library in Birmingham. I worked at the Bloomfield Township Library in Bloomfield Township. Um, supervising people and I was the head of the circulation department. From there I decided that I wanted to give it a try to be a library director. So I got the job at Centerline Library which is a small library and um, from there I guess the rest is history. Prior to my library career I went on a lot of interviews. I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I took the job, a part-time job, at the Troy Public Library while I was looking for a full-time job. I was going to go into public relations. I was going to write press releases and have this glamorous career. And to work at the library was just sort of something to do while I was working towards that. I found a career I loved. I had had no success in the public relations journalism field. I had sent out probably 200 cover letters and resumes. I got nowhere. I started going on library interviews and I developed a great career. Why is that? Because I found something that I really loved, because I really felt passionate about. So I'm just putting that out there to all of you. Obviously, if you need a job, you need a job. But think about what you're passionate about. What do you like to do? What are you good at doing? Because that's where you're going to find your energy. That's where you're going to find your spirit. That's what's going to give you the enthusiasm. So when you walk into that interview, you're going to light up the room because you're so excited to be there. So I'm just going to toss that out for you to think about. That's not necessarily part of this class, but I think it's a good introduction to our subject. So let's get started. This might seem really basic. What's a job interview? What is a job interview? Any, any ideas? Anybody ever been on one? Yes. Okay, so it's a conversation between two people, maybe more than two people, you and the people who are interviewing you, about your qualifications for the job, and they're going to decide if you're a good fit for their company, and you're going to decide if you're a good fit for their company, if that's a place where you want to work. That's a fantastic, that's a fantastic summary of a job interview. I think it needs to be stated before we go into this why we, why we do this and what a job interview is. I think what you said really brings out the heart of a job interview. It's your opportunity to talk about your qualifications for that job. Let me say that again. It's your opportunity to talk about your qualifications for that job. 
that gets lost an awful lot. Most times these days what I'm hearing is how what the job can do for you. What my job that I have here at the Troy Library or any other company, how that's going to benefit you. And that's important. I mean, obviously, you need, there needs to be some benefit in, in there for you. But here's the secret, folks. I already know what the benefit is for you. It's a job. It's a paycheck. It's career advancement. It's career development. I know all that. What I don't know is what you're going to do for me. That's what you're there to talk about. That's what you're there to do. You're there to tell me what you're going to do for me. Keep that in mind. So employers want to interview people because we want to know who you are and what you bring to the job. What can you do for me? What can you do for the Troy Library? What can you do for Beaumont Hospital? What can you do for Macy's? What can you do for Genesis Credit Union? Wherever you're applying, what your employer wants to know is, what are you going to do for me? So that's why we do these things. That's why we do these interviews. Because if we didn't and we just took you on paper, then, it's, then it would be basically a race to see who could write the best resume, right? And a lot of times, people who look really, really, really good on paper aren't the best fit for the company. So it's our opportunity to get to know you, to see who you are, how you are. You know, are you the person that's going to light up the room when you walk in? Are you enthusiastic? Do you say, yeah, I'll try that. I'll go with that. Or every day do you come in, how's it going? I used to call um, one of the organizations that provided support to the library. And the person who answered the phone used to answer the phone like this. <sighs> I'm not kidding. I'm going to use a lot of examples that you will probably look at me and say, are you serious? And I will say, I can't make this up. So, <laughs> so she used to sigh very heavily, and I'd say, hi, so-and-so, how are you? And she'd say, well, suck an air. <laughs> this person got a job. I don't know how. But this person was representing her organization. That is not how I would want anybody to represent the Troy Public Library or any organization that I have any affiliation with whatsoever. So it's our opportunity to see if you're a person that says, I'm doing great, how may I help you? Or <sighs> suck an air. If you're the type of person and your personality is that kind, you know, the Eeyore from the Winnie the Pooh stories or just kind of, you know, maybe you're not, the, quite the glasses half full person that's okay you can be yourself but we can work on ways to turn that around so at least you can present that that's a facet that brings something to the company rather than brings the company down so we'll talk about that I'm left-handed so I have to figure out how to work this microphone and clicker at the same time okay so interviews can be intimidating right is there anybody in this room who just thinks, wow, yay, I get to go on a job interview. I'm so excited. Anybody? Sometimes. Sometimes. All right. Well, when you feel like that, how come? Because I uh, might have found a job that I uh, feel I might be well qualified for, and I might have and, uh, proper preparation might just have me going in with that mindset of saying, I'm in there. Yeah, and that's great. That's great because that shines through. That shines through. So you might be, you're, you're really excited, but you're probably also a little scared, right? But on the other hand, sometimes you know something you're qualified for, but it might be a different kind of uh, market that you've never been um, involved in. That's like, okay, you know, I know what I can bring, but will they buy? Yeah, so you're excited at a challenge. It might be something that you're not used to, but you feel really good that you're up to the challenge, that you, that you can make it work. A lot of times, though, for a lot of people, interviews are intimidating. And they're intimidating because, number one, you don't know who's on the other end of the table. You don't know how many people you're going to be interviewing. Sometimes they tell you, but sometimes they don't. Um, you don't know what they're going to throw at you, right? You don't, what are they going to ask? What are they going to ask me? Um, you want to be perfect or you want to be the perfect candidate for the job. So you're putting a lot of pressure on yourself to be what they want you to be. And that is very understandable. It's very understandable. Another reason why it's intimidating is because it's a different kind of conversation than we're used to, 
right? I mean, we're hanging out, you know, you're sitting in my living room or we're at Starbucks, like, hey, what do you think about that job? You know, I ask questions, you answer them, you ask me questions, I answer them, but we're pretty informal, right? And you can say, oh, wait, I forgot to tell you, blah, blah, blah. In an interview, it's a much more formal conversation. And so you have to be on your best behavior. And that tends to add a dimension of nerves sometimes for people. And what happens in interviews, it's a common, common, common thing, is those nerves take over and they just throw you off your game. They derail you. So one of the things that I want to talk about before we get into the interview questions is how you can manage those nerves. Manage those nerves so they work for you or at the very, very least so they don't derail you. You want to manage those nerves because that, that really is an obstacle to excellent performance in an interview. Another obstacle that I see all too frequently is lack of performance, or excuse me, lack of preparation. I will give you an example. Um, we, did an inter we used to do interviews over at City Hall, which is the building right um, on the other side of Civic Center campus. And it's always very clear to me when people have never been to the library. They're interviewing for library jobs, but they've never been to the library. And I had a question um, you know, that came to the part of the, uh, the interview where the person, you know, where I said, do you have any questions for us? And she said, yes, where is the Troy Public Library? <laughs> and I thought, really? <laughs> no preparation, none at all. Do you know what you're getting yourself into? You need to know what you're getting yourself into. If you're applying for a bank job, you need to know that you're going to be working for a bank. You need to have a sense of what those positions entail if you're going to be a bank teller and you've never been a bank teller before. Let's say you've been a bank teller before, but you've never been a teller for that particular bank. You need to know where it is. You need to know a whole lot about them so you can understand that organization and what you might be getting yourself into, at a minimum, folks. And it shows respect. We're gonna talk a lot more about that in a couple of minutes. But no preparation is gonna really throw you off because What's gonna happen is those first couple questions are gonna come your way and it's gonna be really, really clear to, to both you and to the person who's interviewing you that you haven't done any work. And then you're gonna be nervous and then you're gonna think, okay, I just wanna get this over with and get out of here as quick as I can. So it's gonna probably go from bad to worse pretty quickly. So what else throws you off? Anything else? What else causes you to, to be intimidated or nervous about interviews? I covered the big two. Oh. Competition. competition. That's a good one. That's a really good one. You don't know who you're up against. You don't know who you're up against, so you're kind of scared, am I the best person for this job? I'm going to tell you something. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Because if you believe in yourself and you go into that interview and you can sell yourself in a great way, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who you're up against because you're going to be the best one and you're gonna go in and you're gonna blow the competition out of the water. But I'm here to tell you, and we're gonna, I'm gonna say this a lot to you, if you don't believe that, I'm not going to believe it. If you can't sell me, I'm not gonna sell you to, to me. Because here's the thing, the employers, the people who are interviewing you, we're not your enemies in that room, but we're not your friends. We have to give everybody a fair shake. We have to be, treat everybody the same. So we're not going to give you points or a little push or, or you know, we're not going to do anything for you that we're not doing for anybody else. So you have to go in and carry that ball and show us. So competition, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Because here's the thing. Whatever competition there was for that job, you got the interview. Who cares how many people applied for that job? 200 people applied for the job, we're gonna interview seven, and you're one of them. That ought to boost your ego and your confidence to the ceiling. Feel good about that. So start thinking about things in a little bit of a different way. You got that interview. If you got that interview, you got a great chance at that job, okay? So the remedy for all these obstacles, practice. How do you get better at anything? Practice. How do you get better at baseball? You practice. How do you get better at golf? 
You practice. How do you get better at speaking to a room full of people? You practice. When I started at that circulation desk 20 years ago, I was the shyest person you'd ever want to meet. And I had to take money from people for their fines. And I'd say, um, you owe 10 cents. And people would say, what? So I just kept doing it, kept doing it. Finally, the chin came off the chest. Finally, I could look people in the eye. And after the, at, by the end of, say, a year or so, I could explain why the fines were with the best of them and, and actually collect that money and, and feel, if not great, about taking their money. At least I felt like I could explain why I needed to do that. So practice. There are ways you can practice interviews and interview skills to be really, really good at answering questions. And we're going to talk about that. So keep that in mind. Practice. Not just going over it in the car on the way to the interview. Where is the Troy Library? No, you have to practice. So I'm just going to touch on briefly a couple things that help me. Um, if my interview is at 10 o'clock in the morning, say, I usually don't get too nervous about it until the day before, um, but then the day before I do get nervous. I, I really do. So if my interview is at 10 o'clock on, say, a Tuesday morning, at 10 o'clock on Monday morning, I say, OK, in 25 hours, this is all going to be over. <laughs> All I have to do is live through the next 25 hours. And as it gets closer, you know, at 10 o'clock at night, I say, OK, 13 hours, and like seven of it sleeping so I can do this. In the morning when I'm getting ready, I think, OK, four more hours. And what I try to do is give myself a little treat or a little something to look forward to at the end of the interview. So if my interview is at 10 and I think I'm going to get out about 11, I think, all right, at 11.15 or so, I'm going to Starbucks and I'm getting a salted caramel mocha crazy latte that I never allow myself to have. But on that particular day, I'm having it because I lived. I lived to tell. So that's what I do. If I really think that after my interview, I'm going to drive myself out of my mind going over it in my head, then I might go to the movies just so I can get out of my head for a couple hours and not think about it. And by the time I come out of the movie, I've settled down so I'm not obsessed about it. So again, these are just some things that help me. But it helps me get through. And it helps me think, OK, all I have to do is live. And I'm going to the movies with my Starbucks. So I get excited about that. I drink water especially in the morning, not so much water that halfway through the interview you need to excuse yourself and go to the restroom. But if you're the type of person who in the morning you have a frog in your throat, drink a lot of water and practice talking. You know, it sounds kind of crazy, but you know, you're in your, in your bathroom getting ready and maybe you're just going, hello, I'm Kathy Russ and it's nice to meet you and blah, blah, blah. It loosens up your vocal cords because in your interview, then what doesn't happen is you don't get that frog in your throat because then what happens? You're clearing your throat, you're embarrassed, your nerves take over. So what moves to the forefront of your brain? The frog in your throat. And that takes you off track. It takes you off target. It helps you, it makes you lose your focus. So drink, do what you need to do to manage whatever condition you have to, um, to, so you can be your best in the interview. Deep breathing. Everybody take a real deep breath. I heard this really great technique. You like breathe in for seven, hold it for two, and then let it out for five. So let's try that. So when you're driving in your car, or when you're in, like if they make you, if, if you get there a little bit early and you have to wait in the hall, just do a couple of those because it really does work. And nobody can tell. I mean, if you're out in the hall going, people are, might wonder what's wrong with you. But um, if you're just kind of subtly taking a deep breath, letting it out, taking a deep breath, letting it out, it calms you down. It really does. And then visualization. And I don't mean this all new agey visualization. What I mean is I have a little movie going in my head and in, you know, or a TV show. And in today's TV show, Kathy Russ goes on a job and interview. That's the episode for the day. And so, you know, the day before, a week before, what I do is I, I play this interview in my head that I walk in and I say, hello, nice to meet you. And I sit down and they ask me a question and I start to respond to the question. And if I screw up, I can in my head say, cut, take two, and start all over again. Use your imagination. Use your, use your, your, that facility that you have. It might be hard for some people, but kind of play it out in your head. Practice it in your head. It, it works for me because then by the time I get in that room, I feel like I've been there. 
even if I don't know the people I'm interviewing with. I feel like, all right, I've done this. I got this. I can do this. Practice your handshake. Like we talked about practice talking. Practice your handshake. I'm going to move around. I hope I don't scare anybody. But um, handshakes are not deal breakers in an interview, but I will say first impressions do set the tone. So if you walk in and I say, hi, I'm Kathy Russ. Nice to meet you. Actually, I'm going to let you do it. You say, hi, I'm Kathy Russ. Nice to meet you. Hi, I'm Kathy Russ. Nice to meet you. And you hold out your hand like you want to shake it, and I go like this. What kind of impression that does that convey to all of you? Arthritis. Arthritis. Okay, among other things. How about one of these? No. Kiss the ring. <laughs> I've seen that. Oh, all kinds of things. Here. <laughs> well, you know, I've wondered sometimes if that's what people wanted to do. So here's a handshake. Nice to meet you. 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 Not so hard that you want to turn the person's hand the color of my jacket. Not so hard that the person's eyes start out of their head or they go, <gasps> right? You're not in a strength contest. You're not trying to prove anything. If you're a germaphobe, for that particular time, see if you can do your best to overcome that or just say something like, do you mind if I don't shake hands? I've got a cold. If you really are freaked out about shaking hands with people, then just excuse yourself from the handshake. But if you're going to go for it, do it right. Because I'm here to tell you the little bit of grab or this or this or just the that, it creates an impression. And that's not an impression you want to have. It's not a deal breaker, but it creates an impression that is not particularly positive. Any questions about handshakes? Okay. Okay. Another thing that you can do to think of to minimize your nerves, and this lady here said it wonderfully well, is you are interviewing them as much as they are interviewing you. Keep that in mind. You are not powerless. I think sometimes when people go to an interview, we invest so much. I really want this job. I need this job. This job is going to do blah, 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 blah. And that's the truth. I mean, that's how we feel. We want, we all want to work, right? And we all want the, the advantages that we get from working. We want the career advancement. We want the paycheck. We want the stuff that the paycheck can buy for us. Of course, we all, that's just, that's just the way it is. But that doesn't mean that the interviewer holds all the cards. You can say no. If you walk in and the interviewer or the panel is disrespectful to you, or they're not nice, or they are in some way rude, or you know, just sends up some kind of negative impression, I will never ever tell you not to take that job. That's for you to decide. Everybody's circumstances are different, and you need to make up your own mind. But I will say, if any of those red flags go up, you need to pay attention to them because you're going to be spending a lot of time in this place. And theoretically, during interviews, the interviewers, the potential employers, we're on our best behavior. So if we treat you like that in an interview, what are we going to be like to work for? Wor exactly, worse. So keep that in mind. If red flags go up, you don't have to, you know, worst case scenario, they offer you the job, you say no. Or you walk out of there and you go, man, I'm glad I went on that interview because I don't want that job. Right? You have some power. You really, really do. So keep that in mind. Okay. So here we go. Back to the research. If you're applying, and I don't care what job it is, unless, and even if it's out of state, with the internet these days, there are a ton of ways you can find out about that organization and you don't have to necessarily go there. If you're applying for a job in Colorado, do you have to fly to Colorado so you can take a turn around the Walgreens? No, but you could go to a Walgreens here, right? You can go on Walgreens website. You can talk to people who have shopped at Walgreens. You can go on um, all kinds of customer review sites and see what they have to say about Walgreens. You can come to your public library and ask them if they will help you do research on Walgreens and find out, you know, how's the company doing? 
Is it on the verge of bankruptcy? Is it doing really well? Are they opening new stores? Are there management opportunities? All kinds of things. If the organization is local and it's a place where you can walk into, like a bank, like the hospital, like a library, like a store, um, I encourage you, go. Take a look at it for any number of reasons. You will look at the employees. What do they look like? How are they dressed? How they're dressed is a great indication of how you're going to be expected to dress when you're on that job. How are they acting towards the customers or the people who come into that organization? Are they pleasant and friendly? Hi, welcome to the Troy Public Library. How may I help you? Or are they the, oh, yeah, it's over there. You know, how, how are those people? Are they people that you would want to work with? That's really important, too, because you're going to be spending a lot of time with these people. It tells you something about the management of the organization. If the people are upbeat and positive and friendly and very service-oriented, you can tell that that's a priority for the management. If they're the type who are sad sacks and going around and, yeah, it's over there, or, I don't know, that's probably the kind of communication that you're going to receive when you get there. Training is probably not that great. You know, if, you're, if you get, I don't know, a lot from the employees, chances are good when you're there, you're not going to know either. And that's up to you to decide if you're okay with that. So visit these places. Check them out as much as you can. Talk to your friends. Talk to your family. Hey, I had a really great experience at Beaumont Hospital. They were fabulous. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, I'm applying for a job there. Oh, really? You know, you'd be surprised at just networking, talking to people, the kind of feedback that you're going to get about various places. And again, the internet and your library can help you an awful lot to, to find out information about companies. Um, my advice always is if you have a choice, when you're scheduling your interview, schedule it at your best time. How many of you are morning people? Okay, morning people, if they give you a choice, take that morning interview slot. How many of you are afternoon people? How many of you are evening people? Well, you're kind of out of luck. <laughs> well, maybe not, depends what you're going for. But you know, a lot of times they don't do interviews at eight o'clock at night. But the point being, schedule it for your best time. I am not a morning person. I'm, I'm absolutely not, but I look my best in the morning. And I know that even if I, if I schedule an interview for four o'clock in the afternoon, by the time four o'clock in the afternoon rolls around, I'm gonna look like I've been dragged behind a snowplow. <laughs> and, and it doesn't matter, I can, I can go home and take a shower and get dressed and put on makeup and do my hair all over again as if it were the morning and it doesn't matter. Somehow bet between the time I leave my house and the time that I get to the place, I'm going to look like I've been dragged behind a snowplow. I don't know how. I don't know why. I've just accepted it as something that <laughs> happens to me. So I'm going to make my appointment for as early in the morning as I can get because I know that as soon as I'm done, it's just going to all fall apart. So make it for your best time. Why? Because that's when you feel the most confident. That's when you feel the best about yourself. Hopefully you feel great about yourself all day long. But in terms of physical appearance, I know I feel the best in the morning. So I make my appointments in the morning. Okay. Any questions about that so far? All right. Let's keep going. Okay. What do you wear? Here's a potential stressor that is really easy for you to avoid. Don't figure it out that morning. Right? Figure it out at least the night before sooner if at all possible because if you figure it out the night before and you realize something doesn't fit you don't have a whole lot of choice if at 10 o'clock at night you realize that what you wanted to wear needs to be dry cleaned or it needs to be pressed or it has a giant stain on it that you didn't know about it you you don't have a whole lot of choice so figure it out in advance don't do what i did i was going on an interview um this was several years ago and i thought oh i'll wear my blue suit the morning of the interview, I put on my blue suit. It looked okay, but it felt real tight. Felt a little tight in the arms. And to be honest with you, I felt like a sausage. And, I th and all I could think of is, oh my gosh, if I wear this, I'm going to be afraid when I sit down that I'm gonna, the seams are going to split. And I thought, I really had a debate with myself. Should I wear this? Should I not wear this? 
And I thought, well, it looks good, it looks good, but it's gonna distract me through the whole interview. Through the whole interview, I'm gonna be worried that there's gonna be this giant ripping sound and I'm really gonna embarrass myself. And I knew that in the back of my head, that's what I was gonna be worrying about and it would distract me. So I wore my brown suit, which was a fine suit and it fit. Um, I was lucky that I had a backup. I was lucky I had a backup because all along I'd planned to wear the blue suit. Don't, don't wait till the last minute. Clean clothes, clean fingernails, clean teeth, clean hair. No excuses. No excuses. You do not have to dress expensively. I don't care if your suit is from Saks Fifth Avenue, if it's from JC Penney's, if it's from Target, if it's from Kmart, or it's from the Salvation Army. If you are clean and neat and pressed and create a good impression, that is enough for me. I, I don't care. What I want is for you to look nice and be comfortable. That's what you want too. No wrinkles. Get it dry cleaned, iron it, have a friend iron it, find a way. No wrinkles. If you're me, you're just praying that they don't start coming in halfway through the interview, because like I said, you know, about 4 o'clock in the afternoon, but really about noon, for some reason I just become wrinkled. I, I don't know how it works, but I know it happens. So I use the dry cleaner. I don't trust my iron, and I don't trust my ironing skills. I go to the dry cleaner. No wrinkles. Be appropriate. This is where that site visit helps you. If you've been to the place, you know what people are wearing. And my advice to you is if you go to the organization and you see how people are wearing, dress one level up from that. If they're in like khakis and a nice shirt, you maybe wear a nice um, pair of pants and a sport coat or a skirt and a blazer or something like that. Not necessarily a suit, um, but you go one level up from that. If you want to wear a suit, wear a suit. You're never going to go wrong with a suit. You are never going to go wrong with a suit because that demonstrates that you're interested and you care. You don't have to, but, but don't worry about it if that's the way you want to go. Never, ever, 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 ever wear jeans. <laughs> ever. I don't care if you're applying at Home Depot. Don't wear jeans. It's just not appropriate. And when you're in doubt, dress up. Dress up, not down. If you think, well, I should wear my suit or I could wear my khakis, wear the suit because you're not going to go wrong with that, okay? The, the better prepared you are in your appearance respect, you know, well-groomed, it shows respect to your employer and it shows you're interested. We like that. We want you to come in and be excited like this gentleman talked about. Be excited to be there and have that reflected in your appearance. Okay. Be on time. Be on time. If your interview is at 10 o'clock, you better be there at 10 o'clock. It's probably a good thing for you to be there about 10 to 10, something like that. You don't have to be there at 930. Then you're just going to drive yourself crazy because you have a half an hour to wait. Then you get to practice your deep breathing skills um, for a half an hour. And that's a long time. But I'd say 10 to 10. Here's the thing. If we finish up, if there's a person ahead of you and we finish up with that person, and there you are waiting, we love you. Because we can take you and keep on rolling because there's probably gonna be somebody who's gonna make us late. And here's the thing, here's the secret about employers. If we can take you and keep on rolling and you're there on time, we get to lunch that much quicker. We like that. <laughs> or we get to the end of our day quicker because here's the thing, if we're in interviews all day, the work that we usually do is piling up. So the sooner we finish, the sooner we can get back to our jobs. That doesn't mean you have to set speed records in your interview and get done, and we'll talk about that. But if you're on time and you're, or you're about 10 minutes early, that helps us out. You want to be the guy who helped us out, right? Not the guy who made us late. Be prepared. Bring any materials with you. If we ask you to bring a portfolio, bring a portfolio. If we ask you to bring proof of degree, bring proof of degree. If we ask you to bring a copy of your resume, bring a copy of your resume. I can't tell you how many times we've asked people, please bring proof of degree, and they don't. Or bring a portfolio, and they don't. You've probably just eliminated about three possible questions that we wanted to ask you if you don't bring things. If you eliminate those questions, it's kind of like you're going to get 70 out of 100 on a test, right? We can't score you on those. We can't evaluate those you on those things, so you're not going to do as well. So if we ask you to bring something, 
know that we're asking you to bring it for a reason and bring it. If you, if you want to take notes in the interview, feel free to bring paper. Bring your own paper. I have had people in an interview say, can I borrow a piece of paper? <laughs> and that's shocking to me because lack of preparation, right? Lack of preparation. Can I borrow a pen? Sure. You know? <laughs> I, uh, you know, okay. But in my head, I'm remembering these things. You should always be prepared to talk about yourself. Review your skills, review your abilities, review your accomplishments, review your achievements. This seems like a no-brainer, right? This seems like a no-brainer. But in many, many, many interviews, if we say, you know, describe an, an achievement or something that you have um, accomplished that you're proud of, and people stare at me. And I think, how sad is it that you think you haven't accomplished anything or that there's nothing that you're proud of or maybe there is but it doesn't come immediately to your mind so I encourage all of you before you go on an interview and here's where that practice part comes in sit down and have a little you know cheering session for yourself you know for the next half hour I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna think about all the ways that I am the, uh, wonderful or what I what I'm good at what am I good at? What are things that people have praised me for in the past? Gosh, so-and-so, you're so organized. Gosh, Linda, when I walk into the room and, and you're there, you always make me feel so welcome. So think about those things and have them ready to go because you're going to be asked about them. And again, back to that point that I made. If you can't be your own cheerleader, nobody else in the room is going to do it for you because we don't know you. You know you. You have to do this. So sit down and think about how fab you are for a while. Yes? That's a great point. Review your resume. And, and what's happened a lot of times is, again, the nerves come in and people don't remember what's on their resume. I've had people say, hold on a minute, and turn to their resume and kind of page through it looking for something. You can do that. I don't recommend it because you should have that ready to go. Then I just kind of think, don't you? I mean, from an employer's perspective, what I think is, don't you know what you've done? And don't, aren't you familiar? Like, where have you been in your own life? <laughs> you know, that you have not been familiar with what you've accomplished or, you know, what you did when you worked for Kelly Services or, or wherever you happen to be. So, yes, review your resume. And if you've listed accomplishments, sometimes employers may go off, you know, and, and say something else. Or maybe, you know, if you, it doesn't have to be awards, too. I guess I'm sorry, I'm getting a little off track a little bit. But I want to point out, it doesn't have to be awards. You didn't have to be employee of the month. Maybe you created a whole new filing system for your organization that really just revitalized the whole place and improved efficiency by 30%. Maybe you um, implemented a new system, a new computer system, or a new accounting system, or something that helped that company. That's an accomplishment. That's an achievement. Those are the things that I'm talking about. Those are the things that you should know what you've done and have them ready to go. You need to have a positive mindset. One of the things that drives me crazy, drives me crazy in interviews, ask a question. Um, you know, do you have any experience with the Polaris library system? Well, I've never worked with Polaris, but I do have experience with other systems. Or some way of starting that sentence in a negative way. I've never worked with, have you worked with Polaris? No, I've never worked with Polaris, but... Monitor your answers in your practice and see how many times you're doing something like that. I've never done this, but. Because what do I hear? What I hear is no. No, I don't have experience. And, and after the but, I'll listen, but a lot of employers might not. They might just tune out. So how do you phrase that? I've worked with a lot of different computer systems. I've worked with the Searcy system. I've worked with the Innovative system. I've seen the Polaris system as far as searching, um, and I'm sure I could pick it up really easily. Do you see the difference? Yeah. 
So start thinking about your answers in a more positive kind of way. And you might have to really sit down and think about how to reframe some things that you want to say. I've heard a lot of times, even though I've never done blah, 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 blah. Back to what this gentleman pointed out. Maybe you're going on an interview where you don't have experience in that field, but you have comparable experience in another job. Like for, let's just use me for an example. Um, I've been a library director for 14 years. I've done the budget. I've managed personnel. I've basically run this organization. I probably could run another organization that's not a library. So if I'm applying for a job to run an organization that's not a library, and they say, you know, why do, Kathy, why do you want this job? I'm not going to say, well, even though I've never run an organization that's not a library, blah, 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 because they're just going to hear, I don't have any experience doing this. I'm going to say, you know what? I have experience budgeting. I have experience hiring. I have experience supervising staff. I have a lot of experience running a successful organization, and I want to put that experience to work for you and run this organization even better than it's been run. Do you see the difference? So think about that. Have a positive mindset. Never, ever, ever go into something and say, well, even though I don't, or even though I've never, or I never had a chance to just take the word never out of the vocabulary, at least when you start off that sentence. Formulate questions to ask. There's a part in every interview, every interview, where they say, do you have any questions for us? One of the most disappointing things for me is when people say, mm, no, I don't think so. Because again, remember, you want to show interest. You want to show interest in the organization. You want to show, yeah, I want to be a part of this place. So if you go, eh, no, I don't think so, where's the interest, right? So think of some questions that you want to know about that organization. And if you've done your preparation, I'm sure you'll be able to come up with a ton if you visited the website and seen maybe they, the company does some initiatives in the community. Yeah, I saw you have a community involvement program. Can you tell me more about that? We love things like that. Not questions like, yeah, where is the Troy Library? Or my other favorite, how late is the Troy Library open? Those are things you can get from the website. You don't want to ask those kinds of things. What you want to ask are questions that demonstrate that you've done some research and that you've done some preparation. And there are things about the company that interest you. We'll come back to that. Any questions so far? Yes? How are skills and abilities and achievements, those that should be relevant to the job? Yes. Well, yes and no. Um, because I think people sometimes buttonhole themselves into <sighs> skill sets that are <sighs> Remain to the job. Like, for example, you know, if I've checked out books, I've checked in books, I've, you know, um, done library specific work. I think what you want to think about are portable skills. I'm good with people. I'm adaptable. I, you know, respond well to change. I can do a budget, whether it's a budget for a library, my own personal budget, a budget for an organization. So, yes, I mean, they want, you want to be skills that apply to a job. But I think you want to also broaden your thinking in that it doesn't have to be jobs that you've done specifically in the past. Does that make sense? Does that answer your question? OK. Any other questions before we go on? OK. OK. So here we go in the interview. I want to point this out to you because I think it is very important for you to know. In the interview, your interview behavior is a predictor of how you're going to be on the job. So in other words, when you come in and you shake my hand and how you present yourself and how you speak and how you answer my questions, I'm going to sort of pick you up and put you on the job. So if it's for a librarian job and you come in and you interview with me, I'm going to pick you up and I'm going to put you on that adult services desk in my mind, or I'm going to put you in the youth services desk and I say, oh, I, th I think I can see this person checking books out to people. She seems very friendly. She seems approachable. She seems this. If you seem kind of unfocused, then I'm going to see you on my job as unfocused. If you seem to not be prepared, then I'm going to see you on my job as unprepared. If you're late to the interview, I'm going to figure you're going to be late to the job. So how you present yourself in the interview is how I'm going to see you on the job. 
Okay? Okay. These are scary. These are really scary. I, I, I've done this session for the last four years. This is the first time that I've had to include a section on scary interview behaviors um, because in the last year I've been scared, to be frank with you. Um, facial expressions as editorial comments. What do I mean by that? What I mean is when I ask someone, um, tell us why you applied for this job. <laughs> Did you really not see that one coming? <laughs> why do you want to work at the Troy Library? Really? I mean, you might think it inside. I mean, the Troy Library, we're famous for asking like scenario questions. How would you handle it if? Maybe that's new for you. Maybe that's weird for you. Maybe it's a question you didn't expect. Your face should not reflect that <laughs> in terms of or, or, or <laughs> anything other than, that's, that's an interesting question, you know. Don't do it. And, and this is where I think practice is really helpful if you practice with another person because maybe you're just that responsive of an individual that your face reflects every thought that you have. I don't have a poker face. I don't. Um, but in an interview I do because I, you know, there have been many questions I've been asked in interviews and I thought, why do they want to know about that? Does my face show that? <laughs> no. No. Again, respect. What else? Informal demeanor. What I mean, what do I mean by that? You know, well, that's that fist bump. Hey, how's it going? Um, you guys, you know, I can say maybe in this setting or when we're talking, you know, how are you guys doing today? In an interview, if you walk in and go, how are you guys doing today? I'd be like, okay. Because you know what? We're not friends yet. If, you, if, if we work together, we can be pals. But we're not friends yet. It's a formal conversation. You don't have to walk in and be a penguin and go, hello, it is so nice to meet you. I'm not looking for a robot. Be yourself, but be yourself on your best behavior. Slouchy posture. Where's a chair? I have to, I have to do this. Um, had an interview, and I've seen this more often than not lately, but this one was just egregious. Um, brought the person in, invited her to take a seat. She sat down. It was shocking. It was shocking. The interview went on. We were at a table. She had her elbows on the table, banging on the table throwing herself around, well, 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 it was terrifying. I, I didn't know if she was going to rock it out of the chair. I didn't know. I mean, she was a very nice person, very nice person, just had no clue, none whatsoever, how she was coming across. And if that's how you are in your home, if that's how you are with your friends, fine. You get no judgments from me on that. I'm one of the most informal people there, are, there is when I'm not here. But in an interview, no, no. Because again, remember, that's how I'm going to see you on the job. And if you're pounding on the table or flinging yourself around, I don't want you to scare my patrons. I don't want you to scare the people that come in the Troy Public Library. And I'm sure most employers feel that way. They don't want you scaring the people that, comes, that come into their organization. Yes, did you have a question? Um, what I try to do is um, I always offer people who don't get the job. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I have to say this for the camera. Um, the question was, did I say anything? in the interview about the improper posture and behavior? And the answer to that is no, I didn't in the interview. What I always do is offer people the opportunity to come talk to me after, if they, if they don't get the job. I am always happy to provide people with um, feedback, constructive feedback, um, if they want to hear. I, because I feel like it's not my point in the interview to say that. The interview is to find out skills and experience and, you know, why you're suited or not suited for this job. It's on you. 
And if I, in the middle of the interview, say something like, you know, it's really not appropriate for you to sit like that, I feel like I've just really disadvantaged that person because they're, they're going to be horrified. And I don't want to throw them off their game. They're throwing themselves off their game. And if, I hate to say this, but I have to say it, um, if, if I know some people who are repeatedly going on interviews and repeatedly not getting jobs, and those are the people that I really wish would come and, and get feedback because there's probably two to three things that they could straighten up super quick and get that job, but they're not, they just don't have the awareness, the self-awareness that they need to kind of polish those things up. Because honestly, her answers could have been golden. She could have been giving the best answers in the world. That was really off-putting, really off-putting. So don't insult your interviewer. Oh, this is one of my favorite. Um, we're a library, right? Troy Public Library. And, um, you know, we work with books and materials, but it's more than just books. It's certainly more. It's so much more than just books. But sometimes when people come in for a library job, they feel like um, they need to make a comment about working in a library. And if you have your library degree, I figure you kind of know the environment, you know what you might get, be getting yourself into. So we asked this one young woman um, why she wanted to work at the Troy Library. And she said, well, you know, I love books and I love reading. And that, just so all of you know, we don't do that here. I love books and I love reading too, and I get to do that at home. Because if I'm in my office just reading all day, well then the taxpayers would probably be pretty mad. So, <laughs> and the librarians are on the desk to answer people's questions and help them out. But okay, I, I understood where she was going with that. That didn't, that didn't upset me, that didn't throw me. But she said, I love books, I love reading. Okay, she said, I'm kind of a dork that way. Well, I'm the head of the library. Am I like the head dork? <laughs> and that might be taking it a little too far, but why would you say that? Why would you say that? I guess I'm kind of a dork that way. There, it's, it's introducing a negative where one does not, where, where no comment is necessary. I think, I will give her the benefit of the doubt, I think she was trying to be funny or be humorous or be, you know, I don't know, be inform or just be endearing I don't know what it didn't work so here's the lesson don't do it if you don't think it's gonna work don't take the shot unless you know it's gonna work and the only way you know it's gonna work is if you know the person who's interviewing you really 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 well um, I gave her the benefit of the doubt on that one I didn't hold that really against her um, but I did, did think it was not quite appropriate. And I've had variations of that over the years, whether it's a, a dork, a geek. Um, yeah, I've always been a geek. I always loved going to the library. I was a geek when I was a kid. Why are you running down the field <laughs> or putting a negative connotation on a field that you want to go into? Why are you doing that? It'd be like, you know, if you want to go into a science job and you said you were a dork or a geek or a nerd. I mean, it's just not necessary. So keep in mind when you're going through your answers or when, you, when you're going through what you might say for those kinds of things, just be mindful of that. So use humor appropriately. And again, we've talked about this. I've kind of hammered this. Don't highlight what you don't have, even though I've never blah, blah, blah. Don't do that. Um, vague answers. Vague answers. Um, vague answers usually indicate to me that you don't know the answer to the question. So if you don't know the answer to a question, you can say, you know what, I'm not familiar with that. Can you please tell me more about it? Or don't try to fudge your way out of something. Um, we asked a question in an interview for youth services um, about the Common Core. I don't know if all of you know what the Common Core is. It's a set of standards that um, is be they're um, being implemented across the country or it's being talked about implemented across the country in schools so that all curriculums are the same. So we asked a question for youth services librarians about the Common Core. And it was really clear right off the bat who knew what it was and who, who didn't. Um, the ones who didn't said something about Apple Cores, um, something about, um, you know, it's really important that we have core standards for things and then kind of went off track. If you don't know, you don't know. So don't, don't try to fudge it if you don't know. Yes? Um, back to what you were saying about facial expressions. Yes. Uh huh. You guys are, everybody's got smartphones now. Mm -hmm. You know, video yourself while you're doing an interview, answering questions to sort of help you out to see if you have those facial 
That's a great tip. Um, if you can, video yourself answering questions. Um, you can use your smartphone to video yourself. Um, if you have video equipment, you can do that. Um, if for some reason you don't have access to that or you're not comfortable with it or you think a camera might, you know, you might be too self-conscious and you might freak yourself out, that's bring a friend. Bring a friend, but pretend that it's the real thing. Forget that it's your friend and just do as much of a real life interview situation as you possibly can so your friend can give you some feedback. And I think that's a great idea. Thank you. Thank you for bringing that up. Oh, the mirror. Yes. Yes. And if, if you have no video camera and all your friends are busy, <laughs> go to the mirror. I've done that. It, it kind of, it's a little weird to see yourself like that, but it does work because I've realized I hate seeing myself on camera because I've got all these little expressions and facial tics and verbal things that I like to say and I think oh my god who is that person she drives me crazy and I think if, I, if that's how I'm coming across to me is that how I come across in an interview so um yeah that's that's another great tip look in the mirror and and just do a couple practice sessions in the mirror however you practice practice so here we go we're in the interview the interviewer asks you the question listen to it listen to the question this is hard sometimes because, again, those nerves are going, your heart's going a mile a minute, and your brain's going, what are they going to ask me? And if they ask me this, I'm going to say this. And if they ask me this, I'm going to say this. And, and, and I don't know what they're going to ask me. Oh, my God, they just asked me a question. What was it again? <laughs> listen to it. Focus. Take those deep breaths, and when they ask you the question, you listen to it. Take a moment and organize your thoughts. It is really okay to not open your mouth as my mouth is closing. It's really, really okay. You're better off. Sometimes people think that there can never be silence. We cannot have silence because, you know, they're gonna, the interviewer is going to think you don't have an answer. That's not true. Let's look at how long five seconds is. And I'm going to ask you a question, and I'm going to give you five seconds. So why do you want this job? That was five seconds. Did, how long did it feel? Like all eternity, right? That was five seconds, folks. It felt long to you. It didn't feel that long to me on the other end of your answer. It really didn't. Five seconds. I was in an interview once. This, again, I, I give you these horror stories because I like to show you the extremes. Um, so you really, it will stay with you what not to do. Um, Every question we asked, she took truly 30 seconds to answer. So here's, here's well, I don't even know if we can do 30 seconds because I might go crazy. Here's 15 seconds. All right, that was 10 and I can't stand it anymore. <laughs> Do you see how long, I mean, we think, oh my God, that's forever. You know, her mouth is closing. I need to start talking. No. Do you see the difference between five and 10 seconds? It's crazy. So with this person, every, you know, why do you want this job? And she took truly 30 seconds before she responded to every question. And to the point where I was kind of like, are, are you all right? <laughs> you know, like, is everything okay? You can take a little bit of time to organize your thoughts. Hopefully, the question that came at you was something you were prepared for. Why do you want this job? You should be ready to go with that one. But you could kind of organize your thoughts, maybe get a little outline going in your head, and then you start to speak. It's really, really, really okay. If you need to jot down notes, that's okay too, as long as you've brought your own paper and your own pen. Um, the Troy Library is famous for asking, we love for some reason these multi-part scenario questions. Tell us about a time when you were, you know, working in an environment where there were a lot of things going on, a lot of people waiting for help, the phone's ringing, and you know, like we always throw something in like, and the fire alarm goes off, you know. And, and 
that's a lot to remember. And it's a lot to remember, especially when you're nervous. So if you jotted down, you know, busy, busy place, phone, line, fire alarm, that'll help you remember what the question was all about. If you say, hold on a minute and write down, what if you were in a no? And that has happened to me. No, no. If you need to jot notes, make sure you understand your own system of note taking and just jot down the salient points. Then you're ready to go with the answer with that question. If you need clarification, if you misunderstood the question or you're not sure you understood the question correctly, definitely do not be embarrassed. Do not be ashamed. Ask for clarification. Please ask for clarification. Because here's the thing. I would rather have you say, I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Or repeat it back to me. Are you asking me why I want this job or what my experience is? Something like that. That is perfectly fine. I would rather have you do that than answer the wrong question. If I ask you why you want this job and you launch into all of your experience, well, that's not what I asked you. I didn't ask you about your experience. I asked you why you wanted the job. Chances are really good the question right after why you want this job is a question about your experience. And guess what? You get to go through it all over again. But I still don't know why you want this job. So I know your experience twice, but why you want the job zero. Make sure you understand what we are asking you. If you don't, ask for clarification. Now, if on the second time around you still don't get it, you know, you could that's when I, I recommend people repeat it back. Are you asking me about my experience or are you asking me why I'm interested in this position? And then we'll clarify for you. It's really okay, folks. It's really okay. The third time around, you kind of have to come up with something because clearly either the interviewer is not communicating very well with you or for some reason you're just not getting it and you got to do the best you can. But two times around is really okay. Um, and then leave it at that. Answer the question completely. Answer the question completely. If I say to you, what is your favorite color and why? You are not going to just say blue. Uh, nobody, well, you never know. But probably nobody's going to ask you what your favorite color is in an interview. This is just an example to get you thinking. So blue, but why? I'm not necessarily going to prompt you for the why. Maybe I will. Maybe I won't. What is your favorite color and why? So make sure you hear the, you listen, so you hear the question completely, and then you answer the full question. Blue, because it reminds me of the beach, and I love to go to the beach. Oh, okay, thanks. Versus just blue, right? What happens to people, and I see this all the time, and it's a result of nerves, and it's a result of lack of preparation, and it's really the result of a lack of focus, is people just start to ramble. How many of you have rambled in an interview? That's probably my biggest thing that I have to guard against because I love to talk. And what is more, when it comes to library stuff, not only do I like to talk because I love libraries and I'm real enthusiastic about them, but I don't want to just answer your question. I want to give you 50 years of background so you have a complete understanding of the question. I love to do that. My staff will tell you um, that sometimes there are days when they cannot get a short answer out of me, and I work on that. In an interview, I try to be, I do my best to have focus and to have that laser focus that I'm answering the question that I was asked. Because if you ramble all over the world, what happens? Number one, the great stuff that you want to bring out in the answer to your question gets lost. Number two, you're wasting a lot of time, and you tend to go on for a lot longer than you mean to. And number three, it, 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 I hate to say it, but you might as well know the reality, it kind of gets on our nerves. I'll give you an example. We asked, um, again, back to the scenario questions at the Troy Library, we asked, um, you know, one of those, how would you handle it if? How would you handle it if one of your staff members was um, having a conflict with another staff member. This is for a supervisory position. What would you do? This person started talking about when he managed a little league baseball team. He ended up 
talking about the philosophy of Soren Kierkegaard. I don't know what he talked about in the middle <laughs> because I went away in my head. I know that he did not talk about how he would handle that scenario. It was a lot of philosophy, and it was kind of like just, and I just really went away in my head. And on the interview sheet, I wrote, did not answer question, because he didn't. So make sure that you're focused. Make sure that you understand the question so you can answer it completely, and then you stop talking. And again, it goes back to that being comfortable with silence. If your interviewers are writing, you don't need to keep talking while they're writing. They'll catch up. You don't need to pace your answers to the speed of their writing. And if you stop talking and they're still writing, that's OK. They'll probably appreciate that. If you've answered the question, you're comfortable with it, stop talking. That's your opportunity to catch your breath, take a deep breath, go, yeah, check your watch maybe subtly. Or, you know, I'm about halfway through, another 45 minutes, and I'm on the road having that Starbucks. Awesome. I've lived this far. I can do this. You know, whatever it is you do during that pause, collect yourself. Enjoy it. Enjoy the break. What's really kind of odd sometimes is when somebody gives this great answer. They give a great, great, great answer. And then there's like about a 10, 15 second pause where we're just finishing writing and they go, and another thing, and you just go, well, where'd that come from, you know? And it might be something that has nothing to do with whatever the question was because they've kind of like decided that they needed to fill that silence. So don't ramble. Trust me. There we go. Don't ramble. Be comfortable with silence. Be respectful of the interviewer's time and your position in the interview queue. If you're the last one before lunch, like if you have an 11.30 interview, you better be on your game. Not because if you make us late for lunch, we hate you, but if you go, if your interview is scheduled for a half an hour and you go an hour and a half, well, then we're not real happy with you. Um, if your interview is scheduled for a half an hour, keep that in mind. Okay, half an hour. They've allotted a half hour. Your answers are short and sweet. Comprehensive, but short and sweet. Because you don't have hours and hours and hours to get into the background of every situation or every question that they ask you. They haven't allotted you that kind of time. So tailor your answers accordingly. So just be mindful of, of where you are. If you're the first one right off the bat and you go too long, you're, you're making them behind for the rest of the day. Having said that, if you're out of the interview in six and a half minutes and they asked you 10 questions, you didn't talk enough. Yes, no, maybe, I don't know. Troy Library is a great place. You know, you want to find the balance between enough information and not enough information. And we'll talk some more about that. But your answers, how you craft your answers and how you manage your time, it does demonstrate good time management skills. And be honest, again, I'm going to relentlessly inf and, uh, stress this, be honest but positive. Always, always, always positive. But be honest. If you don't know how to do something, you don't know how to do something. That's okay. I don't have any experience with that. But I'm, I, I'd love to learn how to do that. I've never done that before, but I'd really love to do that, something like that. But start out with, I'd love to learn how to do that, rather than, I've never done that. Oh, yes. Um, in term, uh, do I have any thoughts about panel interviews? Um, let me ask you in, uh, for more information about that question. Uh, just like any experience with it in terms of how to approach the panel interview. Sure, we do all panel interviews here at the Troy Library. And I think a lot of places, um, if they don't, they, they probably go to panel interviews. A small company might have just you and one person. Um, in the interview, but chances are really good you're going to have at least one other person or at least two to three people interviewing you, so a panel. Um, these days with Skype, um, there are Skype interviews, so you know you might be on camera or, or via Skype talking to someplace, somebody or a room full of people in another building. That's common too. Um, I did an interview one time. There were, it was a phone interview, and there were 30 people in the room. And that was just so strange. But the thing is with the phone interview, you just make sure um, your dog is outside and not barking and, you know, try to keep the noise in your environment down to a minimum. But back to your question about panel interviews. I think what you want to do in a panel interview is make sure that you are including the panel in your answers. So even though you might be asking me the question, I'm going to respond to you but also I'm going to look at you and you and you 
and you. I'm gonna when I'm when I'm providing my answer, I'm gonna make sure I include the room in what I say. I think you want to make sure that you shake everybody's hand, that you um, indicate that you are aware that there are other people in the room than maybe the person who called you. Um, I think eye contact is really your biggest friend in that situation. Um, I think what you want to do is, um, if if necessary, you could say, you know, does that answer your question, you know, to to the person, or maybe just be attuned to the cues in between them. Hopefully, they will have some sort of protocol or some sort of um, structure whereby. You know, they'll say, okay, now I'm going to turn it over to so-and-so for the question. If they don't and the questions kind of come from, let's say, you for a, a panel and, the, you know, it starts with you and then goes down to you and then goes over to you and then back to you and then over to you, you know, you might have to, you know, react a little bit. Um, the, the big thing is really eye contact, I think, and make sure that the whole room feels included. Does that answer your question? Okay. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Um, what you want to do, you're shaking hands with everybody. On the way out, you're shaking hands with everybody. You're thanking everybody, absolutely. Um, you then at the end, and we'll, we'll talk about that for the thank you notes. Um, yes, if you're going to send thank you notes, you want to send a thank you note to everybody on the panel. That's a, that's a really good thing to do. Even if they, they might not be all the people who, have, um, who you'll be working with, they might not be people who even necessarily have a say in the decision, but it's polite and it's respectful. And, you you know, a lot of times you just don't even know. So. Yes. I think um, it's it. The thing is, and that's where your practice comes in. Whether you look in the mirror or whether you um, practice with a friend or get a couple of friends. Like for example, you know, when you stand up in front of a room full of people, I've been trying to make eye contact with all of you at one point or another because I'm not just teaching this class to you, right? Um, so when you're talking to a room full of people or a panel full of people, you want to make them feel included. It doesn't mean you have to go, hi, how are you? Yes, I'm so, you know, in your head, you're going five, four, three, <laughs> and then over to you, and then over to you, and then over to you, because then you kind of look like you're doing one of these, right? You want to make it natural, but in that regard, pretend it's a conversation. You know, when you're talking to your friends, you're in a group of your friends, you know, you might have that rapport with some of your friends, and maybe there's a side conversation going over here, but you're talking to them too. So just make sure you, you throw the HR person and some a glance every once in a while or, or a smile. So it it's good to have rapport. If you develop a rapport in an interview with somebody, that's a great thing. Try to include in that rapport or at least don't exclude. So it doesn't seem like, yeah, it was just the two of us and this poor person was just there to take the notes. So yeah, <laughs> yes. Well, I yes, I think um, we always throw that out there for the city of Troy. I think you want to do it respectfully. I mean, because you don't want it to seem like, you know, you're calling up and saying, why didn't I get this job? You know, because they they want to, um, you know, they, they, they want, they probably could give you some feedback, but they want to make sure that that's what you're actually looking for. So I guess what I would say is call the human resources person and say, you know, hi, this is so-and-so. I interviewed for this position. I received a letter indicating that I didn't get the position. I'm wondering if there will, you know, if there's anybody there who could give me some pointers or some advice on what I could do better next time. They pretty much said that in the letter. All right, let's talk about interview questions. These are probably the top five. Everybody always wants to know, you know, what about the questions? What about the questions? Okay, here's the questions. These are five you better have an answer for. Have these ready to go. There is no excuse 
for not having an answer to these questions. The first one, why do you want this job? Why? My very favorite answer, my very favorite answer ever that I get far too many times is because it pays more money and it's close to my house. Oh, wow. Awesome. <laughs> How can they say stuff like that in the interview? That's, this is like blowing my mind. <laughs> As I told you at the beginning, <laughs> I have been on the receiving end of more bad interviews than I can tell you, and that is a very common answer. I think people just don't have a filter, or they, the, the truth is a beautiful thing. And if, and if the truth is because it pays more money and it's close to your house, well, that's, that's great. But here's the thing, you get to pick. So this is your opportunity to tell me that the Troy Library is the greatest library in the whole world, and you would be honored to have an opportunity to work here because the community is fabulous, the staff is fabulous, you've been coming here for 20 years and you just want to be a part of it all. You know, whatever. The truth might be because it pays more money and it's close to your house. I don't need to know that. You get to pick what you tell me. So tell me what I want to hear. Tell me what sounds good for you. Tell me what presents you in the best possible way. Not, it pays more money and it's close to my house. So, in some way, shape, or form, this question's coming at you. Why did you apply for this job? What interests you about this position? Please note what this question is not. This question is not a question about, tell us about your experience. An all too common mistake is people will provide their experience in their answer to this question. And as I mentioned to you before, the question following right after that is probably a question about your experience, which you have now answered twice, but I really don't know why you want this job. Make sure I understand why you want this job, okay? Any questions about this question? Yes? So this is a, like an appropriate answer would tie into the answer to the first uh, question. Like it wouldn't be a, say, supplement your income, that kind of thing. It would be more uh, in line with why you want it. Yes, yes. I'm asking you why you want it, so you're going to tell me why you want it. But why you want it should include because your skills and experience are a great fit, but something about the organization that appeals to you. You know, whatever job you're applying for, whatever job you're applying for, wherever it is, why do you want to work there? Hopefully somewhere in there is because it's a good company or it's a good job or it's an interesting job or it's a great fit with your skills and experience or you've been coming to that place for 10 years and you think it's just so much fun. I love to be around new people and I love to meet new people. So working here at Starbucks would give me an opportunity to bring my great people skills to your environment and provide great service to your customers. I've been told I've been, you know, I'm really good at making pe people feel welcome. And I know whenever I come to the Starbucks, your staff always makes me feel welcome. I want to be a part of that. I want to get in on that. So does that answer your question? Does that make sense? Because if, you know, why do you want to work at Starbucks? Well, it pays more money. It's close to my house. Or, I, you know, I've been coming here for 10 years. I love this place. I feel so at home here. Your staff is so friendly. I have great people skills. I've worked in the coffee industry for the last 15 years. Um, and this is just a fun place. And I'm a fun person. And I feel that there's a lot I could add to it. Do you see the difference? Okay. Other questions? Yes. There's not much difference. What I, what I wanted to demonstrate, um, what the question was, what's the difference between these three questions? There's, they're asking the same thing. You might not get a question that says, why did you apply for this job? You might get a question that says, what interests you about this job? You might um, you know, have some variation on that, but what they're asking you is, why did you apply for this job? Okay, okay. Okay. Here we go, experience, now you get to do it. Now, here we go, yay! Now you can tell, you know, for however long you feel appropriate, all the wonderful experience you bring to the job. Tell us about your experience. You know, 
How long have you been working as a librarian? What have you learned as a librarian? What, um, you know, have you been a bank teller before? Whatever it is, um, something about your experience. Here's where you say, well, you know what? I started off in libraries in 1991. I worked in Cirque. I enjoyed it. Wanted to try new challenges, became a library director, found a career that I loved. The rest is history, blah, blah, blah. You know, however you consolidate that, encapsulate it, and put it out there, there's your experience. Questions? Yes. Okay, if you don't have any experience, perhaps you don't have experience with that particular position or that particular job, but if you have looked at the job description or the job posting, chances are good that they've put in some, some typical responsibilities or some qualities that they want the employee to have. So if they say customer service oriented, you've never been a bank teller before, but you worked at Macy's, you have customer service experience. So you can bring experience maybe that's comparable into that answer, okay? Or maybe you have no job experience at all, but you've done a lot of volunteer work. Volunteer work, make no mistake, is work, okay? So that's when you bring that in. Or let's say you haven't um, had a job and you haven't had any volunteer work, but you were the president of the school's PTO and you've done a lot of committee work for schools or your church organization or another organization. That is also work. Don't get hung up on whether it was paid or not because doing that kind of work, committee work, for example, if you ran a successful event, you planned a fundraiser and raised $5,000 for your church or you planned and ran a bake sale for the school's PTO. That shows organizational abilities. It shows attention to detail. It shows that you can run a meeting. It shows that you can get a group of people to do what you need them to do. This is leadership, okay? So think about it like that. You know, maybe, and maybe you don't have specific experience for that job. That doesn't mean you don't have experience. Okay, so that's why I really do recommend to all of you, you sit down and you have that little session with yourself for a half an hour, an hour, a half day, a weekend, however you know, long you feel you need, where you review everything you've done and see how it applies to the job that you're applying for. Okay? Oh, you're welcome. Nice to have your class. Good luck to you. All right. So what kind of person are you? What do you bring to the job? Who are you? This is where they might ask, tell us about your strengths and weaknesses. They might say, you know, what, you know, that kind of thing. What kind of person are you? What skills do you have? That sort of thing. So strengths. Never, ever, ever just say, um, uh, you better have some strengths and you better be able to talk about them. Most people can usually come up with a couple of strengths. I'm organized. I have a lot of, you know, I care about detail. I pay attention to detail. I'm very friendly. Okay, that's great. Um. The, it's the weaknesses, and I don't like the term weaknesses myself. To me, um, I think it should be, you know, something that you can work on. So think about it like that, something that you can work on. Um, when we've asked this question at the library, people are usually pretty good with the strengths, but I've seen a lot of people be kind of lukewarm about the strengths. Well, I guess I'm, I guess I'm pretty organized. Well, are, are you? <laughs> you tell me. Um, and, and with weaknesses, you know, when people say, well, I really don't have any. I always think, well, really? Because I do. And I'm running this place. You know, should we all be scared? I mean, everybody has something that they can work on, right? But here is the beauty of answering this question. Again, you get to choose what you tell me. Okay? Whatever you tell me, I don't know any different. Because I don't know you. So if you tell me that um, you pay attention to detail and detail is really your thing and you kind of need to work on that a little bit because sometimes, you know, it might um, distract you from doing other tasks, I'm going to say, okay, that's a good one. I like that. Um, the key is whatever you say, make sure you follow it up with how you are managing that, okay? I, let me give you an example. I'll tell you what mine is. Okay, I will on camera to the whole city of Troy, I'm going to tell you what, what my weakness is, and here it is. 
So if I'm asked this question in an interview, I'm going to say, well, you know, I'm not as strong in technology as I am with, with some other things. Um, I'm fortunate that I have a job where I don't really need to, you know, I'm not the person who's programming the servers. And that's a good thing because that is not an area where I am particularly strong. Um, however, I'm, I've really tried hard to build an excellent technology team of people who do enjoy that sort of thing. I listen to them. We talk a lot about technology. I try to learn from them. I do a lot of professional reading so I understand what's going on in the world of library technology and you know, new products, new things we can offer our patrons, new things that our staff can take advantage of. And so I really try to work on that by keeping in good communication with my tech staff and by doing a lot of reading on my own. Where's the weakness in that? I'm, it's, it's, I don't love it. I don't. It's, it's not the thing that I'm immediately drawn to. Here's how I manage it. I read. I try to remember. And I have a great staff who helps me out a lot, who I listen to, and I respect their expertise. Right? So does anybody see any problems with that? No. So again, do this preparation session. What are you perhaps not as strong in that you can turn into something that you can bring out in an answer but demonstrates how you manage it? Okay? I would not say something like I can't be on time to save my life. Okay. I would not say, somebody um, in, an, in a previous class asked, well, should I say something about, um, I have really poor time management skills. No. Uh, don't, you know, don't do anything, don't say anything that's going to hurt you. Find something that you can take and turn into a positive. Okay. And that's going to require some thought on your part, but turn it into a positive. And remember, you get to choose. I don't know any different. Be honest. But because if I went into an interview and said I was a computer whiz, I would be found out very quickly. Um, so you want to be honest, but make sure you can spin it. What do you bring to the job? You know, here's your achievements, here's your accomplishments, here's all that stuff. Why should we hire you? We talked about competition. What sets you apart from everybody else? Why you? And this is the, really the big thing. If you don't do it, nobody's going to do it. This is the part where you bring it home. If you hire me, I'm going to take the sales in this company over the $4 million mark. If you hire me, I'm going to put this place on the map. If you hire me, I'm going to whip those people into shape and, you know, and, and get them, get them, you know, this team's going to run like a well-oiled machine. You know, whatever it happens to be, what are you going to do that nobody else can do? And that's for you to answer. And what's your salary? A lot of times people um, get thrown by this question, you know, when they say, you know, how much are you expecting? Um, hopefully, the job posting had a salary range. If it doesn't, here's where the Troy Public Library or your local library is really a friend. Because if you're applying for a job, we have all kinds of resources that can help you find out how much that position probably pays whether it's a comparable position in another organization or, or whatever it happens to be, we can help you find what the salary range for that position probably would be. So you can be in the ballpark. Because here's the thing. If, they're, if you need to make $80,000 and the position, you know, you do your research and the position's only going to pay forty, dollars don't apply for that job because you're just going to be disappointed. You know, they're, they're, however, if the position will pay 40 and you say, you know what, 25 is good, well, you've just potentially really lowballed yourself, really undercut yourself. So if there's no salary listed on that job posting, do your homework. Do your homework. We can help you out with that, okay? If there's somebody, like maybe you were referred to the position by somebody else in the company, Maybe somebody, that person in the company can give you an idea of how much it pays. In libraries, um, um, for public libraries, it's public information, so we can just find that out real easily. Um, for academic libraries, it's not as easy to find out, so we just talk to our friends and go, hey, how much does that dean make, you know? And we can find out. If you have friends in the industry, they could probably do some digging for you. But that's where really the library is your friend and can help you out. 
So do your research and try to keep the salary ball in their court. If if they say how much, you know, do you how much are you expecting to receive or what's your desired salary range and it was posted, you could say, well, the range that was posted is acceptable. You know, bounce that ball back. You know, well no, really, how much do you want? Okay, well then they're trying to pin you down. And then, you know, give a number somewhere in the range, whether it's the range that was posted or the range that you researched and, and found out. Um, and your chances are good that you're going to be safe. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I've been told also that um, that the job you're going for is not competing with your last job in terms of your salary. That they're going to be competing with the market, what the market value is for the position. So even if you made 45 in your last job, it doesn't mean that the job you're interviewing for has anything to do with that last salary. That's, that's interesting um, because, you know, I think the world has changed so much since the economic downturn. It really has. Um, yeah, and it, just because you made 45000 before doesn't necessarily mean you're going to make 45000 again. Um, it used to be the mindset was, you know, if you made 45000 before, you should always be going up and not back. I personally think that that's an individual decision. I mean, there might be, you, you might have salary standards that you have to make a certain amount in order to make your house payment, your car payment, you know. So to me, what can you live with? You know, if it's a difference, when I left um, Bloomfield Township Library, head of circulation to be the director of Centerline Library, I did take a pay cut, but I was go I, my title was going from head of a department to director, and that was putting me on a track to get here. So that was an investment I was prepared to make, and it wasn't a huge pay cut. That was worth it to me. I think if you do your homework, again, if you need to make a certain amount of money or you want to make a certain amount of money, you owe it to yourself to do that homework because why apply for jobs that aren't going to give you what you want? Unless it's a job so you can get your foot in the door and move up the chain. But if you, again, if you need to make 40 and the position's offering 25, you're just going to disappoint yourself. You're, you're not going to get what you want. So do you put yourself through that? That's up to you. Um, I, sometimes when, when you change careers, you know, you were going, you know, like you were a library director and now you want to work for Greenpeace. You know, I might have to take a significant pay cut if I want to go work for Greenpeace. Maybe in my other life I've saved enough money that I can absorb that and I can take a pay cut. And it's worth it to me because I really want to do this. Well, that's up to me. So I guess my advice is just know what you're getting into, which isn't really an answer to your question. <laughs> True. Yes. Yeah. And, and I think sometimes what employers do is they ask for your salary history because they want to see if you're in the ballpark, um, you know, like in terms of expectations or what you're used to making. Um, you know, is this position going to be a significant raise for you um, versus is this position a significant pay cut? Um, I think if it's a significant pay cut, then what may happen is that, it, you know, kind of what happened to the lady who was here before is is although it was a little bit different scenario. Um, is, is, you know, why do you want this job? Is this just a stop in the road before you go off and do something else? And then it would be your job to say, no, this is, you know, no, I've been a library director, been there, done that. I've always loved Greenpeace. It's a career change. This is what I want to do. You know, it's your job to convince them that you understand what you're getting yourself into and you are in it for the long haul and it's not just a stop in the road. So, but that's a good point. The other thing, too, um, is, is salary isn't everything. What kind of benefits are you going to get? You know, if you're getting a pay cut but you get a car allowance, you know, I don't know how many co companies do that anymore, but, um, <laughs> but let's say they do. Um, or, you know, you're, you're taking a pay cut but they reimburse you for, you know, maybe you get a paid lunch or something. Or maybe the company brings in um, lunch for the, the staff every day, or maybe you get a gym membership out of it or something like that. Maybe there are some other things that offset that pay reduction. So what's important to you? Do, do employers ask for proof for the salary or is it just like you, you would give them a salary history? A lot of times, yeah. Uh, do employers ask for proof? Um, sometimes they ask for a salary history and they usually say, you know, include resume, cover letter, and salary history. 
something like that. Um, on the city of Troy there, we have an application format and it says there's a box um, called, and it says desired salary. And then we have you fill in what amounts to what would be on your resume. And there's a little box that said, you know, salary, and then you put in, you know, whatever per year, that kind of thing. So there's various ways that we ask that. Um, no, um, I, I have not ever, I've never seen or heard of that. It, it doesn't mean that they couldn't, but I, yeah, I, I wouldn't, I think they're, I was going to say, when they do the reference check, they might ask, you know, dates of employment and ending salary or current salary. Sure, sure. Yeah. All right. Okay, so we're in the home stretch. So in your interview, never, ever, ever badmouth a former employee. Why did you leave the, you know, such and such job? Oh, I hated that guy so much. My boss was such a jerk. No, no, don't do it. Because we think you're going to do that to us. Don't do it. It's just not professional. It's really not professional. Don't downplay your skills and abilities. Up, positive, up. Not have a good answer for a standard question. All those five, you should have something ready to go. And this is in your handout. These are just words employers like to hear. Can't go wrong with these. So the way you act during an interview is the way we're going to see you on the job. We talked about that. We care about your past only as it is a predictor for your future. So for example, if you had seven different jobs in seven years, we, that might raise a question for us. If it seems like you only stay in a place for a year and then you're moving on, they, we might ask about that. If you have an answer, like, well, my husband's in the military and he was transferred seven times in the last seven years and I've taken jobs wherever we've lived, um, you know, but he keeps being transferred. But now he's stationed here. We have a commitment from the base that he is here for six years. So I will be able to work for at least six years here. You know, something like that. Explain it. If you can explain it, then there's no problem. If you go, yeah, I was just kind of trying to find myself and, and I don't know what I want to do, but this sounds fun and I think I'll give this a whirl. No, <laughs> not going not gonna, to not gonna fly real well. And how, how can you help this employer organization? What can you do for us? How can you make us the best organization we can be. How do you help me make the Troy Library the best it can be? How do you help, you know, whatever your organization is, be even better than it already is? What do you bring? And you all bring fabulous things, fabulous qualities. And do you want to? Is this a place where you want to work? Is it? That's up to you. So, questions you should ask. These are just, I'm just throwing this out there. Um, what are the skills a top employee would have? You know, that's, that's a good one to throw out. If you can't come up with anything else, you can throw it back to them. Yes, on this job, what are the skills a top employee would have? What are the challenges and opportunities this organization is facing? But really, for me, what it comes down to is what do you want to know about this place? What, you know, if you've done your preparation, you've been here, um, you've, you've walked in, you've seen the environment, you've seen the atmosphere, you've been on the website, you've talked to your friends, what do you want to know? about the place. Not where is it, not how late it's open. What do you want to know? Tell me more about that community program where employees have to spend, you know, two hours a month helping homeless people build houses. You know, what, you know, community involvement or tuition reimbursement or, you know, I, I read that after five years, you know, you'll send people for a master's degree. Is that true? Man, that's great. Can you tell me, you know, how does that program work? You know, those sorts of things. What do you want to know about this place? So the big question is, if you're offered this job, do you want to work there? Are they people that you would like to work with? And is the organization's goal or mission compatible with your own? I think that's really important to, to keep in mind. Because if it's something, if they're doing something that you don't believe in, that's going to be a tough fit. You know, and again, that's up to you. You know, everybody needs to work and everybody has their own situation. But if it's something that doesn't really sit well with you, is it something that you should really be pursuing? That's up, up to you to think about. So it's over. Yay, you lived. You lived through it. You, you aced it. You knocked it out of the park. All those great things. You went and got your Starbucks coffee and then you went to the movies and you came home and you had a nice dinner with your family and told them how wonderfully well you did. 
In between all that, send a thank you note. It's okay to get business cards. You can also call the HR person and ask for names or email addresses or, or addresses, um, um, mailing addresses. Email's okay, email's fine. If, you, if there's just no way that you can get a note out, um, you can do an email. But I think I will, I will always opt for the handwritten personal above an email. If email's the only thing you can manage, do it. Do something, even if it's only email. But if you, can, if you can spare the change for the thank you cards do that, and the stamps, do that too. And again, um, if you don't get the job, sometimes you can ask for feedback. I think it does take bravery to do this because you don't know what you're going to hear. But if you do it and they give you some constructive feedback, you can take that in and it will help you for the next time. And all it takes, folks, is one successful interview and then you don't have to do it again, hopefully ever, but at least for a very long time. So, all right, so what questions do you have? We got a, a quite a, we have a decent amount of time so we can take questions. Yes, ma'am. I, I don't think you need to do that. The, the question was in an email, do you put an attachment, a letter attachment to the email or just do the email? I think just an email is, is perfect. I really do. You know, dear so-and-so, thank you so much for the opportunity to interview you with you last week. Um, no, because you know what? It's... Oh, you know what? You're fine. You're fine. I would do it today. Um, and I would say, you know, something like um, taking the opportunity uh, or, you know, thinking about the position um, since our interview, I am even more excited and interested, something like that. Um, I, I think you're, you're well within the ballpark. I mean, three months later, no. <laughs> Oh, you're very, well, you're, it's my pleasure to do this. And, and I have to tell you all, um, I commend you for taking the time to come to this session. I hope what I've talked about has been of benefit, but I really commend you because to me, you're going to, you are going to get those jobs. You will get those jobs because you care. You're here, you're learning, you're, you know, even if I've said one thing to you today that helps, I'm, you know, it's worth it to me. If it helped in any way and you'll know, um, then, then you will get that job because you want it and you care and you're practicing and you're working to be the best person you can be. And I think that sets you apart honestly, than people who on their way to the interview are, you know, kind of maybe thinking of some things or who just sort of walk in cold and, and, and wing it, quite frankly. Those are the people who, I, I'm sorry to say, are probably going to have a real hard time, but you're putting the time in. And so, you know, bravo for you. So let's give you a round of applause. The thing is, too, if, if you do go on a lot of interviews um, and, and you find that, you know, maybe you've, you've gone on a couple um, and, and it's just not happening for you, I mean, I'd be glad to sit down um, and, and talk to any, any of you. Um, I, I feel so strongly about this because I want people to get jobs and I feel like the library should do their best to help people. I think people... <sighs> Every single person has so much potential and every single person has something marvelous to bring to a job. They just have to do the work to find out what that is and do a little bit more work to bring that out. A lot of this is common sense. A lot of this you already know deep inside. It just makes sense. Is there anything t today that I've said to you that is shocking? No, it, it makes sense, right? But the nerves take over and you forget. Or you kind of just, you know, are so used to being truthful. And I'm not saying don't be truthful in an interview, but you can phrase things in such a way that they reflect well on you, then I can't be on time to save my life. I have really poor time management skills. You know, I mean, when people have said that to me in interviews, I think, oh my goodness, you, you poor thing. <laughs> you, you just don't know. It's a lot of education. So anyway, what other questions? I've bludgeoned you into silence. Yes. Um, I think it depends on how much experience you have. If you're if you're going for um, if you've if you've been in the job if you've been working for like two years or you're straight out of college, um, your resume should not be four pages because what in the world are you putting on there? Um, if you have been in the library field for 20 years, um, 
my resume is my resume is two pages of experience and then a third page is like professional activities and conferences and presentations that I've made and you know awards and that sort of thing um, so you know it, it really depends what you've got um, this is a good time as good time as any to put in a plug um, the library does do a program called um, um, information or skills for the job seeker and they cover resumes and cover letters in that session um, there's also all kinds of library resources about resumes about cover letters um, if you're not into books, we have a lot of online resources. There are also um, some databases and that kind of thing that um, can can help you to put together an effective resume and a cover letter. Library staff's always happy to help. So I hate that I can't give you a really specific answer to your question, but it really depends on your background. I'd say two pages is a good rule of thumb if you've been working for a while, okay? But make sure, here's the thing with your resume, make sure if you're if you're going for two pages make it an effective two pages you don't need an objective anymore your objective is to get the job right <laughs> if you have an objective you have to change it every time you apply for a different job you know my objective is to be you know if i say my objective is to be a library director of a large suburban library but i decide i want to work at greenpeace well i got to go in and change that so you want a resume that you don't have to necessarily have 84 versions of right um the other thing is, and, and the thing is too with an objective, it, it really is irrelevant these days. Your objective is to, to get a job. Um, don't put in things like hobbies, you know, collecting stamps, turtles, and watching sunsets. You're taking up space on your resume with those things that have nothing to do with the job. And you're, you're, you're taking away space that you could fill with some amazing thing that you did. So think about it that way. Use that space to highlight what you've done or skills that you have or, or something, whatever you bring to the job. Okay, does that answer it? Okay, yes. Um, I would still go a little formal. I'd still go on the formal side because again, you're not hurting anything. Right, right. Um, I, you know, in interviews, I usually say, you know, I'm Kathy Russ, I'm the library director um, and I, I'd say nine times out of 10, get thank you notes addressed to dear Miss Russ, which is fine. You know, if somebody said, dear Kathy, I'm, I probably am not going to think too much about it, but right. And you always want to, again, like, like dressing up, you know, err on the side of formality versus informality. Yes. I have a question about uh, cover letters and resumes. My situation is um, a couple of years ago, I worked a job for two years and I was laid off. And then I, uh, a couple months later, I uh, wound up, uh, getting a position that held for a year that I lost due to a uh, medical long-term uh, stay in a hospital, would it be appropriate to write something like that in my cover letter so uh, these uh, prospective employers don't think I'm job hopping, that I actually have legitimate issues for not uh, holding a job for more than a year or two years, or up to two years? Um, I think it really depends on how you phrase that. Yeah. I really do, because here's the thing that worries me. If I say, yeah, sure, go ahead, um, but it's phrased in a certain way like um and i'm not don't please don't misunderstand me i'm not saying you're going to do this but like um you know dear sir madam i'm interested in this job even though i was off work you know for health reasons for two years and you know got laid off from this other job i'm ready to work now i mean you, you know don't lead with that <laughs> because um because that I think immediately sets up an expectation or a perception in, in the mind of the employer. I will tell you folks, we did a, an interview panel, it's on the city's YouTube channel. Um, it's called What Employers Want, and you can look that up. We had um, representatives from Genesis Credit Union, um, Shore Mortgage, and um, Brian Kishnick, the city manager, was also here. A lot of them said they don't pay too much attention to cover letters. Um, that doesn't mean don't write a good cover letter. It just means that I think sometimes the bigger the organization, they may or may not be looking at cover letters as, as like scrutinizing them. So I, I don't think it would be necessarily a bad thing. However, I don't think it necessarily has to be there. I think it would be something that if it came up in an interview, you should have an answer for. So what I would recommend to you is write your cover letter, leave it out, 
and highlight the, the cool stuff that you've done, the skills you have, the experience you have, what you bring to the job. If, if you're left with a space or it seems like there's a good way to kind of indicate um, that, then I'm sure you could throw that in. I, I think I'm leaning towards leaving it off, to be honest with you because it seems like such a dicey proposition that you don't want to end up shooting yourself in the foot. Right, yeah, because I'm just curious because my resume kind of looks like it's got holes and, you know, just like short-term Right. And unfortunately... What I would do is just make sure in the cover letter and in your resume, you really highlight all the skills you have okay. and, and all the work experience you do have, yeah. especially if your work record was, um, you know, if that's just a little bump in the road and everything prior to that, has been, you know, fabulous, I wouldn't worry too much about it. I really wouldn't because um, I'll tell you, I worked at Centerline for five years. Um, I had, I left Centerline and I was in a job for about 15 months. I left that job and was in the other job for 11 months. And then I came here. And that, that other job that I told you about that I didn't get, the reason that I didn't get it, I aced the interview, but I had two short stays. And I could explain them but I, you know, I didn't, I didn't get it. I didn't put anything about it in the cover letter and I wouldn't have put anything about it in the cover letter. Um, it was just, you know, one of those things, the job came up at Troy Library. I'm from Troy. I got my start at the Troy Library. I love this place. It is part of my heart. And I basically brought that out in the interview and they were able to, you know, and explain the, the two short stays. I got the job. So it doesn't have to count against you as long as you can explain it. So, right, that, absolutely, with the economy, I mean, especially, oh my gosh, folks, this is, I mean, th there's been nothing like this probably since the Depression. People with the layoffs and with, um, you know, companies downsizing and all of that thing, there's probably not a family out there who hasn't been affected. So don't get hung up on that, and I think most employers are going to understand that. The point is, make sure you can explain it so it doesn't seem like this is how things are going to go going forward. Yeah, so far I survived two layoffs and majored in medicine. Yeah, yeah, well, so, yay, good for you. I mean, and you're still standing, and here you are. So you're, you're going to get that job. You are. Did I see a hand over? Yeah, yes. Right. And the cover letters for you to explain why you want to go for that job, why you like the company. So you want to focus on that as opposed to anything. You're going to explain all the other stuff in your interview. Yeah, I, I agree. I'm glad you said that. I'm going to have you, you're going to team teach with me next time. No, I'm HR. I'm no, HR. you're fab because no, you've brought out a lot of really great stuff. Yeah. I appreciate it. Um, no, I really do. And it's good. You know what? What I always tell people in my, I teach a class at Wayne State, um, look around the room and network because you never know who you're going to be interviewing with and you never know who you're going to interview. So, um, you know, make some, make some friends. Um, but yes, you're absolutely right. You know, use that real estate on the cover letter and the resume to highlight your skills, highlight your experience. Don't put anything on there that that isn't relevant. Like I said, you know, I've, I've seen too many resumes. You know, I like walking my dog, going to the movies, and playing volleyball. And it's like, okay, <laughs> you know, if we have a if we have a Troy Library volleyball team, then maybe maybe I'll hire you. But but we don't. So you know, can you check out books? I mean, do you know how to use computer systems? Do you know? Libraries, Dewey Decimal, whatever. So, anyway, what other questions? Yes, ma'am. Uh, are there any two tips like how we have to sign off an interview? Like the things to remember while ending up ending up the session? Any good things like which uh, will leave a good impression on us? Um, the interview, the people, the the people you're interviewing with will usually tell you when you're done it'll usually be what usually wraps it up is you know do you have any questions for us you ask whatever questions then they run through maybe the timeline or maybe they they tell you okay we're interviewing six more people you can hope to hear by the end of next week or what have you and you know thank you very much thank you very much for coming in and they stand up is usually your cue that you're done um when that happens you stand up to smile shake hands again if the opportunity presents um, thank you very much for the opportunity. I really enjoyed meeting you. Um, I look forward to hearing from you. You know, that sort of thing. You, you don't need to um, make it long, but just sort of, um, it was so nice to meet you. Thank you for the opportunity.
It was very nice to meet you. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you very much. I enjoyed hearing more about this job. Thank you very much. It was great to meet you. You know, and then you're done. And then you go off and breathe deeply and yeah. So, does that answer your question? Okay. I saw another hand. Yes. I would not go into detail on that. I think what I would say is just um, something like I wanted to explore other opportunities. I wanted to um, try new things. You know, this position came up and it seemed like a great opportunity. I would not go into that because here's the thing. It, to an employer, especially an employer, um, you know, I, I want to be very careful how I say this. Um, there's two sides to every story and the employer that's the first thing the employer is going to think so it's going to seem on the outer reaches of bad mouthing not really you know especially if you don't go into detail but i just wouldn't even go there okay i wouldn't even open that door you just wanted to try other opportunities even if you wanted to say something like um you know it just wasn't a good fit you know leave it at that um, but I would try to be a little bit more positive, like, you know what, um, it was a great experience working there, I learned a lot, but I decided I wanted to try something new. You know, just be positive. Other questions? Are you sure? <laughs> All right, well, I really want to thank you for your time. Thank you for your goodwill while we had, it just, yeah, exchanged microphones and had little technical difficulties. Please know I'm more than happy to help you. Um, if you ever want to you know, make an appointment and bounce some things off me, I'm, I'm glad to do it. And I really believe, I really believe you all have it in you. You will get those jobs. You will get it. Just sit down, list your skills, list your accomplishments. And, and I hate to sound like a journey song, but just believe in yourself. Don't stop believing. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank